This is episode 26 of our talk, and today I'm thrilled to introduce you to my mentor, Dr. Libby M. Karen. I'm very grateful that she found the time in her crazy schedule to be here with me, because I know you will all benefit from what she has to say. So let me introduce Dr. Libby. She loves dogs and cats and recognizes her clients on the faces of the dogs <laughs> she treated. That, that immediately explains that she originally was trained as a veterinarian, a surgeon at Cambridge University. And after car accident, she, was a, she wasn't able anymore to work as a vet and had to reinvent herself. She studied behavioral neuroscience, is a behavioral psychologist, and apart from a degree in behavior, she is qualified as a flow coach and a peak performance specialist. She knows how to calm your nervous system and rewire your behaviors. Becoming is better than being. Carol <laughs> S. Dweck. <laughs> Welcome, Libby. I'm so beyond thrilled that you accepted my invitation for our talk. So to lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Really pleased to be here. Thank you. And to jump right in, would you agree with a quote from Dr. Dweck and why? So. It's such a fascinating quote because it, it calls to two parts of the equation. There's this amazing ability for us to remain consistent in the way we identify ourselves. Strongest force on the planet. It's not what it's not what you think you can do or can't do, it's how you identify yourself that determines whether you do go on to do anything that you're doing. So by saying this becoming is so important, it frees you from that, well, that's not my identity. Because as soon as we start saying something that we can derail with a single thought, we're lost, we're screwed. So if we say something like, I am a millionaire, which is what the law of attraction tells you to do, right? And this is one of the bits they get wrong and it's a very subtle shift. But as soon as you say something, that alarm goes off in your head. No, you're not. <laughs> so you, you can try as much as you like to do all the affirmations in all the world. It will not work unless you understand this fundamental bit of your brain. If you can derail it with a single thought, that ain't going to fly. Your brain has to accept the 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 growth part of it and that's where the becoming part is so powerful mm. because it allows for you to be on this constant i'm still evolving i'm still learning i'm always reading i'm always for, and i know you do the same karen i know you're always on that path walking with me and walking with others it's it's part of the journey right mm. and so i i love that quote i think it's really powerful so long as you understand what it's saying it's not saying don't then step into your identity when you're then ready to hold it energetically absolutely own that shizzle when you get there <laughs> but you've got to let yourself walk that path and understand that you're you're on a on a climb yeah yeah absolutely i agree totally by the way for the listeners it's a brilliant book mindset <laughs> simple title mindset <laughs> yeah everything you so need. from working with animals to working with people to get them in a state where they can work as they naturally should in the first place. How was this shift for you? It, do you know what's really funny is I've always been a coach, like secretly. I just never used to get paid for it. I just did it for free. So I was always <laughs> telling, I was always getting, I'd be the, the, the listening face, you know, where the strangers talk to you on the tube. And people were always sort of letting me help them walk through life. I just didn't have a name for it. And it, it genuinely wasn't until I was forced to look at what do I actually do? And what I do is help people solve their own problems, help them get out of their own way, right? And I do it through neuroscience, that's the how. But actually, my job on this planet is to hold people safe while they walk. That's, you know, if I can drill it right down, it's giving people that safe space to do that growth, to do that expansion, to do that energetic shifts that we need to do before mm. we step into a new identity, right? And so that was part of my role as a vet you know I'd be holding people safe while we did a difficult put to sleep of a dog they've been with for 16 years and my job was holding the, you know it's the person that I was actually holding and, and I never really looked at it like that until forced to put down my scalpel and say okay now what and that was eye-opening for me that was a real a huge revelation but you can tell but, and I don't think you've done my money magnet course, but there's a, an exercise in it where you say, look around you, look for evidence in your life of what you really give a flying one about. And my bookshelf has always been floor to ceiling, all the books, all, like, 
they're here now look they're, they're all the books all the books are here they're just like polyvagal theory my favorite flow my other favorite and there's there's always been this desire in me to learn as much as I could about why people do what they do and that now is the embodiment in, in my daily life which I'm so honored to do and I love doing great and I love being with you on that path because oh my god it shifted so much shifted so that's why I sit here now <laughs> <sighs> I see the flow coming over you. exactly it's yeah it's beautiful but Coming back to the animals, what can we learn from animals in general and our pets in specific? It must be a they, connection. Oh, gosh, it's so fascinating. They don't screw themselves up. And we've forgotten this skill. We've forgotten. We are human animals. And we signal all the time. And the biggest person we signal to is ourself. And mm -hmm. just something as simple as what the clothes you wear. It's a story you're telling yourself, right? That doesn't mean I don't have days where I wake up a depressed too and roll myself up in my juve. I do that too. You know, everyone's human. We forget what we're allowed to do or not allowed to do or we let society tell us what we're allowed to do or not allowed to do. And it's a really strong piece to be more natural in what is it that what do I feel right now what do I what do I feel into right in this moment what's a whole body yes you know what's what's my body telling me and we this somatic psychology of the the bottom up rather than just the cerebral top down way of living is that's that's very animalistic but very powerful yeah and you read it a lot that people who have a cat or a dog or pet in general are way more happy and more way more yes. healthy yes so oxytocin release, the bonding hormone. So as soon as we've got an animal bond, the human animal bond releases this beautiful drug oxytocin, which is all about connectivity. It's all about uh, this feeling that we're not alone, this feeling that we are sharing this experience. And there's something about that that the human body needs. So a good hug for 20 seconds releases oxytocin. But, you know, there's other ways. There's self-soothing. We can self-touch. We can self-pleasure. But animal hugs, just the best. Best and very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what triggered the interest in neuroscience and behavioral uh, psychology in you? What was the trigger to do that? For me, it was like having your eyelids peeled back. Like, you know, it's suddenly seeing the world differently. And it was gobsmacking to me that this stuff isn't taught in schools. You know, this idea that the human needs have to be met. And so our behaviors are just a way of meeting those needs. That's it. Like that's what we're doing on this and we, we dress it up and we, we put on different clothes and we go and work in offices and we, you know, but we have to meet our needs. And I first learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how that stack works, where if we haven't met the base layer needs, you can't ascend up the pyramid, you slide straight back down. And so you have to be rigorous in, am I getting enough sleep? Am I, you know, otherwise you're not available for any of those higher levels of play in the same game. You just yeah. don't get there. Yeah. And so understanding this brain-body connection, yeah, gosh, I mean, that's a long time ago now, isn't it? That's 20 years. But yeah, 2001. And then I've just been walking that path ever since and just deepening my knowledge and getting more specific about which bits of it I find fascinating. Like polyvagal theory is something that's um, relatively new to the market. And it's very much like a focus of where you put your energy, where you put your your intentions because there's so much to learn you could be doing it forever yeah. oh absolutely but that's why becoming is better than being right and we have to keep growing right yeah absolutely we absolutely. are currency yeah absolutely yeah. and and you mostly help uh, entrepreneurs businesses to get better or in flow with what they do best to what extent do you draw from your own experiences when you help others? And how do these typically left brain enterprises <laughs> react to what you say? Woo woo. It's so funny because it's it's very there is this sort of split, isn't there, of the science and the woo. And some some come round to it a lot more quickly than you'd think <laughs> that it that it has merit because of the fact that we have in the last 15 years got the experience to understand that the science that we know like when we invented functional MRIs we began to see the blood flow changing in people's brains as they thought different thoughts and that was eye-opening because until then it was just theory 
it was just like a construct. So this book that I held up earlier, there's a really good one on this, Flow. And that's obviously the next course that we're running. Um, and Flow State is all about this elevated level of peak performance that you can access. And the reason big companies get me to come in and teach their staff is they know this means money. They know mm -hmm. that when you're operating at peak performance, you get better results like from all of your team and therefore everyone's more productive and therefore they don't leave and they're happier and they feel valued. You know, one of the biggest pieces that needs to be reminded is that people need to feel valued. And if you're out of flow, if you're working in something that's not your flow state, you don't ever feel that real deep sense of connection mm -hmm. with it and that mm -hmm. real integration of mind, body, soul, which is what's so important is to feel like you're doing something worthwhile. Oh, absolutely. That's why you always have to work from your heart, right? Exactly yeah. right. And not exactly. just, yeah. There's another good book about that, by the way. Yes. Uh, you first have to be happy and then not work your bum off and do all kind of studies and then try to be happy because it doesn't work. The psychology of happiness, yeah. It's important, I know. But people uh, get that so wrong because they think, when then? When I yeah. get there, then I'll then, be happy. Yeah. And they play this game with themselves for years. And a lot of people yeah. come to me when they've been doing it for millennia in their own businesses and in, <laughs> in companies. And they're always telling themselves about the next goalpost. When I hit that, ah, then see, I'm, then, yeah. then. But mm. that comes back to identity. That comes back yeah. to this piece on, do you know what? You've got to be true to yourself as you are now. And you are enough now, not when yeah. you hit that goal, not when you yeah. sell this many pieces of art or hit that target per month or do that. You know, no, now, right? We, there is only now. That's yeah. all we've got. Because our, yeah. our memory of yesterday is just a, a brain trace that's as amorphous as our prediction of what's going to happen tomorrow. That's also a brain trace. Both are equally, like the brain puts like post-it notes up on the wall and says, this will happen tomorrow, that happened yesterday. But all there is is just here in yeah. the middle right now. Yeah. And that is... By the way, so beautiful. I had a dog for a long time. I will get another one and a cat mm. and, a, and a donkey. And, but <laughs> and anyway, <a> donkey. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, That's funny. they are always in the now. And that is also absolutely that, that they keep you in the now. Mm -hmm. And I see sometimes when people, the dog does something or has done something wrong. A minute later, it doesn't remember that it did doesn't something wrong. So yeah. it has no. It is completely useless to punish yeah. the dog for something. He something that know. happened over here. And it's yeah. like what? Well, that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? Is that is we spend a lot of our life living out emotions that are either regret and shame, which is always about past actions, or fear and dread, which is about future, and forgetting this in the middle. Come to the middle. Come to the now. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And we hear it more and more, by the way, the alignment mm. of mind, body, and soul. Mm. Yet many horribly fail, and many others say they have the secret. I mean, yes. you hear it for I know, I have the secret, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us what it means, mind, body, soul, alignment, and how yes. you help people with that? Yes, you are always aligned. This is the, this is the key point. You just might be aligned to the wrong goal. So alignment is about things lining up. So it's literally this is aligned with this, which is great unless you want it to be over here, in which case you need to align with something else. <laughs> so it's about where you're going, not just about where you are now. And this is where the understanding about alignment must be about what you're aligning with, because you already are aligned to your reality of where you are today. To get to that higher level, we have to shift that alignment to be 100% certain that where we're going is going to happen. So we have to start with faith, belief without proof. We have to start with this understanding that there is no proof. Mm. But you've got to hold it anyway. And the ability to hold that gap, we call it the gap. So we, we, we talk about this difference between your as is, where you are today, and your to be, where you're going. Mm -hmm. And there's a gap between them, right? And I help people close that gap as quickly and as elegantly as possible by getting them into alignment with the belief that this is, is in existence already. Yeah. Because it's only by holding that really solid in the front of your mind. Every, and there's no two ways about this. You can't say, yeah, 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 I'm in alignment. But 
no, 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 no. Then you're not in alignment. <laughs> Come back. Exactly. Yeah. Come, you can't. There is no but. You're not allowed to. Oh, but I just feel. No, 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 no. Come back. Back to the center zone. Back to the now. Be happy now and know it now is coming now. Yeah. Then it starts to work. And exactly. then the wheels start to turn and then the flow yeah. turns on. Yeah, exactly. And that what you say, it's already there. That is quantum space. That is something that is more and more becoming familiar also with Dr. Joe Dispenza, who has done yes. numerous ways really of big research. Yes. Really, he is now doing research with cancer patients and his trained meditation group is helping mm. people who have severe cancer to heal them on mm. a distance with a team of specialists, professors, doctors, who first thought he was woo-woo, but he isn't. That's and exactly the, it, isn't it? And, and, yeah. and what the nice thing is, and that's with you too, it's never, it has never been woo-woo. But we are so trained in yes. you have to see before you can believe it. No, you have to believe yes. it before you can see it. And yes. now science is finally getting closer and yes. closing that gap. So he, yes. can, he can show proof because he measures everything. He's measuring all of the electricity in our body and ultimately we are electrical creatures. We are yep. creatures made of charge, you of know, and energy, energy yeah. it can't be created or destroyed. It can only transform. It has to go yep. somewhere and that's what yep. flow's about. And yep. if as soon as we clamp down on the flow, as soon as we block the wire, as soon as we increase resistance, the flow stops. And so to me, it's all about this concept of letting things flow. But to do that, you've got to trust. <laughs> and that's really difficult yeah. for people. Yeah. Really exactly difficult. they want to see it and then yeah. yeah so to move further on that one i am very spiritual i never call it woo woo i'm really for me it's the universe and source and i know many artists are that too i know what it is to be in flow because i'm in flow when i'm paint absolutely and right. peak flow state isn't it yeah and that's i lose track of time of everything and would you would what you offer help them with their success in their art business? Because that's another thing, you know, it can be in your studio, that's all perfect, but then you have to do the business side of things. And if they have an art business or want to start one, would what you offer help them with their success? Massively. I mean, the thing with business is that it's almost the opposite of art, isn't it? Yeah. It's the very hardcore tasks the admin the spreadsheets you know and those things if that's not your natural flow state are incredibly difficult to get into I know. and i'm <laughs> i'm that side of the grid as well i'm about creation and people i am not about data and spreadsheets so i literally feel like i'm poking my eyes out with a spoon when i have to do those tasks but there are ways to manage this and um that's why i, I built the course called flow because when you understand your neurology you can work around it because all procrastination is is pain avoidance it's us trying to not do something that's going to cause us more pain doing it all procrastination comes from a place of just trying to keep yourself out of pain so if we can start doing things to minimize how painful it is so like the quote unquote business tasks that distress your nervous system if we know in advance what those are going to be we know when we're going to do them we know how we're going to feel and we know the rewards once we get out the other side, you can start to move the dial and make these easier mm. and make these more accessible to you. So, yeah, absolutely it helps. It really yeah. does. And it, and I work with entrepreneurs of all different shapes and sizes. Um, I've got a couple of artists on my books. I've got a couple of people like property developers that are much more around that side of the grid who find the creative bit really difficult, you know, the writing creative copy or a Facebook post or something like that. So it, just depending on your neurology, you've got to get precise about, okay, what do I have to, for me, what do I have to do for me to make this as comfortable and as le least painful as possible is the way to think about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you have several programs of which yes. I did one. Trinity and start the follow up this month. Oh, so good. I'm so super good. excited. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a bit about them? What's Trinity so and what's Flow? We always have um, some, th some outcome that we want whenever we design a course. So, this course that we're about to start, Flow, 
the outcome was actually there a long time ago because I'm a stage speaker. So I get hired to go onto big conference stages and talk for an hour or two or three. And when I do these talks, they always want me to provide the learning outcomes at the end. And so I, I very quickly just dashed off this um, lecture set a couple of years back. And then I looked at it and I went, actually, that's pretty useful, isn't it? That's, that's actually quite a good thing to learn. And it was things like, learn how to stop procrastinating, learn how to get out of your own way, learn how to reach levels of peak performance that you are capable of, you're just not doing them yet. And because I did it in a hurry, <laughs> I didn't really value what I had until I got the reactions back from this lecture set. And my God, it blew my head off and people were just going, oh my, this stuff, this is everything. And then I started going into companies and doing um, training days for them. And then people hired me as an external consultant and brought me back time after time to teach their sales force. So there was one company I was with MSD where I was their external consultant for two years. And I'd go into their quarterly sales meeting. This was just um, before the pandemic hit. I'd go into their quarterly sales meeting, train on stage for a day. And there was me on stage for like one out of the three days every quarter. And they just kept bringing me back and bringing me back. And so that's where this course came from was, was big business, understanding the power of productivity. And so I've now been teaching it around the world to entrepreneurs for the last two years. And it's just, it's, this one really blows my mind. And Trinity is, is great because it's about that alignment piece. Flow is what you do with it. Flow is what you do next. Flow is that piece about, all right, so now I know what I want to, now I know how, how do mm -hmm. I do that? Mm -hmm. So this is the tools and the, it's so much more than just mindset. You know, mindset is never enough. You need the energetics behind it. You need that alignment piece and you need to get everything in motion. It's about movement. So this is when we start to really motor. Yeah. yeah really. And that is very interesting because what you say, I always see emotion yes. as motion. And then emotion, yes. yeah. So your emotion motion. is also motion. It's motion. Absolutely. So motion it is a state comes of, from emotion. Exactly. Yeah. It is a state of flow. It's the yes. currency. And, and yeah. Which is why I like yeah. to think of it like yeah. water and like electricity. Because when you understand that it's not about staying where you are, it's mm -hmm. about the movement and the direction. And it's and it's got that velocity and it's got that, that vector where it's got movement and a direction that it's going in then it starts to make sense because it does come back to this belief piece about yeah. you've got to believe in your destination as well yeah. for that yeah. motion to be valid and that's exactly. what emotion is about is how you feel and about it right exactly exactly and that's so so brilliant if you see that coming together but you have this needs to be clear to yes deeply come into it and to express a secret I had after your trinity was that I um, started doing um, the meditations again. I, I meditate a lot, but I started again with um, tapping into new potentials with uh, Brilliant. Dispensa. Brilliant. And suddenly I had it. It was like a message. It said, listen, you just do what you need to do. Cooperate with us. Oh, and that is that so much. That is cooperation. That is cooperation. The universe, I have to just do what I do and cooperate with the universe because the universe, and then you just start to believe. It's not even belief, you know. Love it. And that's and that the knowing, is, isn't it? That's, and that's, that's the, the knowing. knowing. And that's the knowing. Yes. I was so happy. And a lot, I think, <laughs> I think so much art comes from a place of knowing, doesn't it? You have to have certainty that when you, put that brush to paper you have to have certainty that you're in the right place and that you're doing the right thing and it's the right color and that knowing you know as soon as you doubt yourself as an artist it goes wonky doesn't it you've got to just boldly well, get is, in there and yeah, start yeah. you can't but it is also you can't, it is also skill you move, first you, oh, need gosh, to, you can't just do this like okay now i envision this that's nice now i, I saw it I, yeah pretty but yeah <laughs> but um there's another thing and that's the underestimation of art because you tap mm. pure in your right hemisphere. And that's mm. where you get into a flow state because your right brain, and you know everything about that, can't give you an answer. Your right brain will never give you an answer, but your right brain has the imagination and you can create and um, create and solve creative problems yes. in there. And then you can transfer it to the left brain. Once so, you've done that bit. 
once you've done that bit. And yes. so that's yes. why art in that sense and learning art is so important for your whole brain thinking and whole brain working. Yeah. Oh, God, I look forward to uh, to flow. Really do. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Do you have one piece of advice or wisdom you could share with the listeners? I would always say that until you know yourself, really intimately know yourself, any form of growth or development is going to be slightly blocked. Because when you know who you are, and when you trust that, suddenly everything moves so much more freely. So if you could do one thing, it's get to know yourself as best you can. And that means journaling the hell out of everything. That means getting your pen, getting your Tame Your Brain journal, obviously, and <laughs> writing down everything that comes out. And I literally, I do this myself, I'll show you, because it's not it's not just, I do actually walk my talk. So here's my, my little book. And this is um, what everyone on the Tame Your Brain course gets because I believe in this. Ah, look, there's yours. But I've literally got like pages and pages of stuff that is just free form thought. I do diagrams, I do maps, I do film writing. I write myself a letter every year. And you can see this one here is, um, I always start, Dear Libby, it's June, the whatever date it was, 13th, 2023. And my, what a year it's been. And I write as if I'm a year from now. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you journal and you write a letter back from a year ahead and then back. Yeah, I do that too. I've done that really this powerful. year and it's very powerful. Yeah. 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 It's a real game changer. And as soon as you start trusting yourself enough to write it on a page... <laughs> the biggest thing and committing it to paper without feeling like complete it then that is a big step towards having that faith in yourself that then makes you go do you know what i'm now going to go out and make this happen yeah yeah somehow you start to create a path right yeah 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 very much okay last question who is the role model you would like to have a great conversation with and what would you ask Oh, of all the people, it would have to be Tony Robbins because he was my first. So he was the first person where I just heard this string of words coming out where everything I heard, I wanted to know more. And everything he said, I was just like, yes, that makes so much sense. And I see it now. I see why I've been doing what I'm doing. I've seen where I've blocked myself. So I would sit down with him and I would just see what came out. Because when you get to the levels of self-development where there is just this layers and layers of knowledge there. And I'd class Joe Dispenza in the same pocket as that. I'd class um, Zig Zent Mihaly in um, the flow terms in, in terms of that. You know, these people, they've studied for years to get the knowledge they have. And I would, I would just love to absorb all of that loveliness mm. over dinner, mm. just sit there and talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for dinner. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Before um, we finish this one, where can people find you? I will put so it in I'm, the show notes too. Thank so. you. Yeah. So I'm at Tame Your Brain and on Instagram. And we're about to launch the Tame Your Brain Academy, which is a, a very easy way to have me in your back pocket. So the Tame Your Brain Academy is a monthly fee for a small amount where you get my work drip fed to you because we all go off track don't we we all veer off the path we have as we say there's ups and downs and some days you just need to hear 15 minutes like a shot in the arm to get you going again and so the tame your brain academy is my my spiritual home where i hang out i'm also at the sisterhood for alpha entrepreneurs which is my facebook community and people can find me as well on the website which is chemcaron.com great i will do you have a link to your... Um... Yes, of course. I will put the link to Flow as well for people that want to. And if they mention your name, Karen, I'm really happy to offer them a discount on the founder pricing that we're at at the moment as well. Okay. And um, that little daily membership, you have a link for that? Yes, of course. 
yeah Three, I'll put that out. Because... we're about to launch that yeah it's not live yet but it's uh, for the first people that get in i think i'm I've opened up half price for the first 25 people so it's like 49 dollars a month um for the first 25 and then yeah after that it'd be 97 months or something like that so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. getting quick <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you can mail me the links, then I, I put them in the show notes. Amazing, um, thank you. This was so lovely, and thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Such thank a pleasure. You so thank much. you for having me. <laughs> thank you for a great conversation, as always. Really enjoyed it. Always enjoy talking to you, Karen. Oh, thank you. Same, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>